Hey Dragonauts, what's Dragon on? Asos Flame back here with another deck. We are looking at Dimmer Control today with all the best proliferating mechanics that you can find from all will be one, or at least the ones that we really care about anyways. <laughs> Before I get into the deck, please remember to hit that subscribe button down below to stay up to date on all the newest decks for MTG Arena. And with that, let's talk Dimmer Control, or as the deck is aptly named, actually Venser Control. This deck is trying to focus around Venser Corpse Puppet here, the two mana one three lifelink toxic one, all about proliferating. If you proliferate, you got two modes you can choose. The first off, you can make a the Hollow Sentinel legendary artifact Golem three three, or uh, if you do, target artifact creature can gain flying and lifelink until end of turn. So the idea with this list is Venser is down. You're going to be using. Proliferate mechanics not only uptaking your opponent's poison counters after hitting them with some toxic stuff, but using the Hollow Sentinel to be created and alive for a life link and flying to give you a little bit of extra life total to finish off your opponent and just keep putting pressure on them. What are we going to be doing for pressure? Well, that is where our removal package comes into play with this list. First off, we have got Cutdowns. Fantastic one mana removal. For any early game aggression the opponent may have, always loving three of this in the list. Splashing in, <laughs> ironically, uh, Drown of Icor, Drown in Icor, sorry, target creature is going to get minus four, minus four until in turn. While this is a sorcery speed removal, the secondary line we care about here is proliferate. This synergizes with Venser so well and our other toxic mechanics, so we like Drown in Icor. For all round purpose removal though, we do have Go for the Throats in the list. And lastly, Gixis Command, coming in for, again, delaying aggro games. You can destroy all creatures, you can force your opponent to sacrifice the creature with the highest, you can return two creatures from your graveyard to your hand, or give one of your creatures plus one, plus one, times two, and a life link until end of turn. So, fantastic all-around purpose tool. Our removal is going to hit a wide variety of creature targets. We don't really run anything in the main deck that disrupts hand in terms of, like, duress or dreams of metal and steel as you have seen in other videos but creature decks are really where our problem can be for us so we need to target as many as we can in different ways that we can while advancing our agenda for proliferate to maximize Venser's usage now let's touch on some other spells that we have which is our counter magic because these are our other ways to interact with stuff on board uh we're going to be playing stuff with toxic our opponent is going to get poison counters there's a great chance that you have corrupted meaning your opponent is going to have uh, three or more poison counters on them, which Bring the Ending loves. So Bring the Ending is like a make disappear. Counter target spell unless its opponent pays two. But the uh, the key thing here is if your opponent is corrupted, the controller, so you counter your opponent's spell, they're corrupted. Now it's just straight up countered. Bring the Ending is actually just a counter spell. No downside for two mana on any spell you want as long as you've dealt in the, uh, the poison counter through toxic damage, which is what we're all about in this list. We're also running a couple in the gates, stopping non-creature spells, and reject imperfection, countering a spell. If it's countering something that's three mana or less, we proliferate. And a lot of stuff we're probably targeting is going to be three mana or less in the early game, you know, notably Fables, Thalias, Skrelves, maybe Rafine, Trespassers, Corpse Appraiser, tons of stuff that you want to counter. And just again, proliferating is huge. Trigger your Venser, you add up the poison counters of your opponent, and it's all coming together. That's our removal package. Let's talk card advantage here. And we've got a decent amount. First off, Prologue to Phyresis. This is one of the best ways you can get the poison counter train rolling on your opponent. Not only do you draw a card, but your opponent gets a poison counter. That means all your proliferate stuff is already going to start maximizing usage after you've Prologue to Phyresis. Distorted Curiosity lets you draw two cards. What's great about this is as soon as your opponent has those three, it's going to cost two less. So this is a one mana draw two cards for us a lot of the time. If we're running out of card to draw options, we don't have anything in hand, Deluge is a great option for this list. Looking at the top X cards of your deck where X is the amount of mana spent and you put two of them into your hand. So we can pay this in on four and then flash back it later for seven, look at four cards and look at seven, grab two. Stick it right in, Deluge is going to do wonders for us. And lastly, Soren the Mirthless. Soren gets us cards from the top of a lot of library. And while we may lose life for it, that's okay, right? We're proliferating. The hollow is going to be out. We're going to give it life link and flying. We're going to get some life. So it's fine. Soren is just a good engine for us to keep drawing cards extra a turn. In addition, 
if we do need more life, we can always minus two and make a two, three flying vampire life leaking token. And with all that proliferate, you may just get to seven. So you can deal 13 damage to any target and gain 13 life. How sweet would that be? And we've touched a lot on the different types of proliferating cards. And, and this is another one. It kind of fits into both here. It's both a uh, toxic card, proliferating card, and a uh, removal piece all stacked together. It is Varaska, Betrayal's Sting. Varaska, you can draw a card and proliferate and lose a life for it, zero. So Soren and Varaska together already, Varaska is proliferating Soren. Already Varaska is proliferating the poison counters. Fantastic. You can minus two, target creature just becomes a treasure artifact. That's it. It's nothing else, it's just a treasure. So annoying creatures on the board, no problem. Now it's a treasure. Uh, amazing. And if you do get to that minus nine, if target player has fewer than nine poison counters, they get a number of poison counters equal to the difference. So you're putting poison on if you have been able to, but you're just worried about proliferating, just minus nine for Aska, no problem. Your opponent's not gonna really know what to do once they've got that last poison counter waiting for it to be dealt to them. I mean, a simple prologue to Phyresis gets that last one, just ban, cast it. But the last two cards in this list that I absolutely love, we've already touched on Venser. The final one is Voidwing Hybrid, a flying mana 2-1 toxic one, with the benefit, if you proliferate, return it from your graveyard to your hand. So Voidwing Hybrid is a great recursive threat that you can use to just apply toxic pressure to your opponent. If they remove it, like they put it to the graveyard, well, just proliferate. It comes back and you can replay it. You start doing it again and again and again. Araska triggers this each turn. You know, your reject imperfections, your I cores, all of that's going to do it. You've got some great options here to just bring it back consistently. And your opponent's not really gonna know what to do with a 2-1, aside from probably just keep killing it. Maybe they have to farewell it, it kinda hurts, but hey, if they farewell a Voidwing Hybrid, I'm not crying about it because I still have my Varaska and my Sword. In terms of the land base here, we are a control deck. We wanna make sure we can disrupt things where we can. So there are actually some inclusions here, a Field of Ruin and a Blast Zone. Field of Ruin letting you target those triple colored decks Playing into the fact that they probably don't have any basics, maybe, maybe one. So you remove them down to land, disrupt their potential draws and setups that they may have had, and mess up their color combinations. You've really got to test if players are playing to the uh, the basic strategy of understanding there is targeted land destruction in the format. Uh, lastly, the Blast Zone here. Blast Zone just extremely nice, letting us uh, stack up some charge counters and using Blast Zone to sacrifice it and blow up anything equal to the amount of charge counters on it. So another just great board clear advantage for us. Sideboard, what's our plan? What do we do in the sideboard? What decks are we gonna talk about and counter? Well, the usual three, as you know, control. Always the first one to talk about against control. Our plan's not too uh, too complex, really. You bring in Duresses. Duress is gonna let you target your opponent's hand, grab a non-creature spell, uh, non-lands, card and just chuck it out so take away the counter magic take away removal take away a planeswalker the rest does a lot in our control matchups we also can bring in our two negates better disruption against their counter spells lily on the veil taxation on their hands and icker moon gauntlet that proliferate again this is where the proliferate strategy really comes to light with control because now we can turn into a slight super friends list we can use Icar Moon Gauntlet to continually buff up our Planeswalkers to proliferate after we've gotten a poison counter on the opponent. And just by simply proliferating one walker and then each of the walkers, we are counting down the turns our opponent has until the poison counters reach to 10. And then they still have to contend with the walkers themselves. Secondly, like that just better synergizes with our Voidwing hybrid. So the more that hybrid is removed, the more you can just bring it back thanks to Akram and Gauntlet because your walkers are all going to proliferate, which is fantastic. If we are up against mid-range, we do have some Reckon Your Bank Busters and Disdainful Strokes, again, touching on that Lily. Uh, Kaito Shizuki also being an option here, getting you a uh, little bit of attacker's card advantage on that plus one. Not too concerned about the minus seven, but the, uh, the plus one, definitely very nice to dig a bit deeper into the list. Bank Buster just being all around great for card draw and stroke making sure that you can stop those invoked despairs from ending your day 
uh, needlessly. <laughs> Up against aggro, not too much really to bring in against aggro, to be honest. Uh, the main deck's pretty well stacked to handle aggro between the cutdowns, the go for the throats, and the Gixis command, along with the, you know, your bring the endings and reject imperfections. So not much to touch on really for aggro. You're generally just looking more to attack for control and a mid-range. But with that, Dragon Nuts, enjoy the game. Uh, let's go ahead and take the play here. Uh, yeah, you know what? That's fine. Can I use points for Pappy? Yeah, I don't mind, Hulberg, if you want to. Uh, they are your points, friend, so if that's what you choose, absolutely. Slow, but that feels fine. Deck Doctor A, you got it, you got it. All right, Pappy, we can take a look at your list. Uh, I think we'll just talk in here. Let's slap some Pappy. <laughs> Uh, I just passed the turn again. We're apparently we're doing control versus control. So let's try to memory deluge here. There's Earth I resurrected. But that's fine. I'm actually okay with that. Surprisingly enough. Um I don't really just want to like Gix's command just to do that, so I think what I'll do here is instead we'll Soren. And we'll make a life linking vampire. You fight for me now. Magic Hunt and Boxer Rice. Yo, that's awesome. Arc way to I'm glad here. Uh we can just block that, that's fine. I don't mind that. Gets an Urtai off the board, I got nothing. Nothing to complain about from that. We'll plus up Soren here. Reveal that land. Play it in. And uh, we'll just pass the turn. On the wayside, four CMC kills it, I think. I mean, it's still a fine two of. Sure, uh, Odawar is fine. So Curious Odawara. Hey, let's just go ahead for that Deluge again. <laughs> I just got another one, so. Uh, I will grab a Void Wing and a Varaska. Let's do Shipwreck Marsh. We'll play in our Void Wing hybrid. And then I'll hit next, and we'll pass the turn. And we'll reject imperfection for Ty. And that's two or Ty's gone. And there's game one. So game one was great controlling the board. We didn't really get to do the infect, but nonetheless, we still got there in the end. So game two, we are bringing in duresses, negates. Opponent is most likely on a control deck like us. We want answers to the stuff. A little bit of extra draw with Wrecking Your Banks Foster, always great. And we're doing a Planeswalker pack. So Ikramore Gauntlet is going to help with that proliferate on our Lilies and Kaitos so we can get that Toxic really rolling on our opponent. Let's go ahead and see how game two goes. Negate into Lilies, nice, and then Soren and Bath. I mean, that's just a good curve. <laughs> I really can't complain, you know? Ah, it is Esper Legends. Okay. Hmm, good to know. Uh, who's a good boy standard? Hey, awesome, Tommy. I love that name. Let's just go ahead and bring the ending to that. And I'm actually gonna play in the Ikramore Gauntlet here. This is just an easy resolve Ikramore Gauntlet. We can play this a little bit slower. And I will bring in Soren here. Let us tap that. Ah, you know what? I should have uh, messed up. I actually should have hit the wedding announcement. 
Yo, Caleb, what's going on, friend? How you doing? Tried to explore a fire ring? Awesome. Oh yeah, with Emrakul. How'd you like it? Edict. Ah, yeah, Edict's fine. I think it doesn't bother me in the slightest. Uh, let's just go ahead and uh, Lily here. We'll stick that to three right now. No more distractions. Well, Let's plus see. one here, and I'm gonna get rid of the you land. Me. We'll say no attacks and pass the turn. Urtai's fine. Really, you hit Lily. Fine. Interesting. I know when I'm not wanted. Well, let's go ahead and opponent has two mana open, one card in hand. I think I'm just going to go ahead and uh, pull on Veraska here. And I will tap a the land. It was fun. Felt adding some Stitch Supply would help the curve. No, that's fair. That's fair. Urtai can become a treasure. No attacks. Potose. All right, sure. Potose on Soren is a little unfortunate for me. I can't cast it. Go ahead and void wing here. Say no attacks and pass the turn. Smart clue for opponent. It is, definitely. They are cycling a Rafine's Tower. We are gonna reject imperfection. Uh we're gonna tap Katose. Not that it really does anything, but we'll submit zero there. It's the title beta of my Oryx for good reason. No, you're in for a good reason, Rio. <laughs> uh, I hit Mythic today with uh, our good friend Fight Ranking, actually. Uh, yeah, there's just nothing else. Whatever, you know what? what you know, we can just have another one here. Let's, uh... I should have attacked first. I messed that up. Oops. Oh, well. <laughs> Anyways, let's go ahead and negate that Soren. Uh, yeah, I'll just bump that up again. Lots of snooze tonight, Krebs. What's going on? Happy Wednesday. How are you doing tonight? Real. Hope you're doing well. And they have another Soren. All right, sure. I too enjoy rigging shenanigans. I will show you the list after this match. Hey, what's going on, King Randall? How you doing, friend? Welcome in. Uh, we'll go down to 11 here. The untapped thing on your stream is freaking sweet. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. Let's go ahead and draw here. Ugh. Not really looking for lands. Go for the throat's kind of helpful here. Um, I think I have to go for the throat with the 3-4. Reason being, so I can just poke Soren and get rid of it. Hey, you doing tonight, by the way, King Randall? Hope you are keeping well, friend. Uh, we're just not looking too good on this one. I may have to take out the negates. A little bit more creature than I thought there would have been. Thanks, this is just getting rough. <laughs> yeah, you got me, opponent. All right, let's fix our sideboard here. <laughs> Game two, hey, we got the Planeswalkers rolling, but nothing really good happened from there. We didn't hit anything. So game three, we're gonna switch things back. Now that we know it's not exactly a control deck the opponent has, we are opting to bring back and Drown and Icors and go for the Thrones. This will enable us to have a little bit more creature interaction. So let's see how game three goes. 
But yes, there is a reason for the stream title tonight. Ooh, yeah, I'll keep. Turn two void wing with some bring the endings. Love it. Question for you. Uh doing FMM this week. Rule vehicle or red white anvil sac or red white anvil sacrifice? Humans and Phoenix. Ooh. Uh with humans and Phoenix. I think your best match with Phoenix is between Phoenix and humans. I would lean towards more sacrifice. RB sacrifice, got you, okay. That's what I wonder. All right, one Void Wing hybrid coming out here. Shipwreck Marsh. Hoking for two and pass the turn. Bring the ending on that winning announcement. Field of Ruin into a Void Wing hybrid. Poke in for two, past the turn. Bring the ending, the Wandering Emperor. Get the concede, and there's the game. Dimmer Control, the new meta. Hey, Dragonauts, thank you so much for sticking around to the end of the video. It is always appreciated. Please remember to hit that like and subscribe button down below to stay up to date on all the newest MTG Arena videos. And with that, Dragonauts, as always, keep believing. I'll see you next time.